Right, you guys have been asking me to do this video for such a long time now and I promised to either upload it at the end of December last year or start of January this year. But due to the move that I'm making right now, I'm changing location like 600 kilometers apart from where I live right now. Um, I couldn't quite manage to pack it into this time period. This video is gonna be an intro video that I did a couple months back when I started this YouTube channel which by now is the most popular video on my channel. But enough talking for now, let's just grab a coffee and a notepad and roll through this together. So let's talk about music first, because music is ultimately the thing that determines the pacing of your edit. And this is one of the most important factors when it comes to your intro. I'm gonna give you two options where you can get music. One is a free option and one is a paid option. The free one is obviously in the YouTube studio, you have an audio library. Just go to your YouTube studio and then on the left side, scroll all the way down until you see this audio library. And all of the songs in there are completely free to use, no copyright claims and you have the right to monetize your videos. And what's even better, there are sound effects included as well. So this is the YouTube audio library, which if you're doing YouTube just for fun, this can be a great way to get music. But there are obviously better options out there with higher quality music. And the one that I would recommend you to go with is Artlist. So I've been using Artlist for quite a while now. And the reason why I'm using this is just the quality of the music and sound effects is top notch. So if you sign up for Artlist's personal plan, this will come around to be $130 for a year. But if you use the affiliate link in the description down below, you will get two months completely for free on top of your subscription. So that's 14 months for $130, which comes around to be like eight to nine dollars a month. And for me, that's totally worth it because I'm just gonna go eat out one time less a month and I have the money then to spend on Artlist. So once you've done that and you pick the song that you like, either from the YouTube audio library, from Artlist or whatever royalty-free music that's out there, we wanna go ahead and create our project template so we can start working on that intro. So let's go ahead and talk about some project settings and the timeline settings. So the first thing that I would recommend you to do is open up DaVinci Resolve, create a new project, and then in the bottom right corner, you see project settings, and then you wanna click on there, and then you wanna determine the timeline resolution. So this timeline resolution should normally always be the resolution that you edit your videos in. And for me, this is 3840 by 2160 and my timeline frame rate is always 24 frames per second. So that's what I'm gonna do. But if you edit your videos in 1080, obviously choose that. And if you edit your videos in 29.97 frames or 30 frames or even 60 frames, you obviously wanna choose that. So there is one more setting that I wanna talk about and that can be found under color management. So we're gonna click there. The color signs should be DaVinci YRGB and the timeline color space is Rec. 709 scene and that is fine as well. But if you scroll down to the bottom, you see this broadcast safe and then we wanna check this box, make broadcast safe. And once we've done that, we can hit save and this will save up all the settings. So now that we've done our project settings, let's go ahead and structure our media pool. Because when we come back to this edit, uh, maybe a couple months down the road, we want to have everything set up nice and structured. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in this master pool, I'm going to right click and create a new bin and that's called intro. And then open up this intro folder and then in there I want to right click and create a new bin and this one's going to be music. Then another one which is going to be footage. And then maybe another one that you call mats if you want so. That's totally up to you, but music and footage is kind of necessary in my opinion. But for now, let's go ahead and import our music. So it's going to a music folder and then hit Control and I to import media. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my downloads and then this is the song that I wanna use. So let's go ahead and click open, then go to our footage bin, Control and I to open up some media. And then we got these clips that I wanna use for this intro. And then just click open and this will load up everything in the media folder. 
So now that we have our media pool nice and structured, let's go ahead and trim down the music to just a portion of the song that we like for our intro. And I usually recommend going with something in between 5 to 10 seconds. I wouldn't go with something longer than 10 seconds, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so let me hit play and then I'm just focusing on the beat, on the music, where I want my in point and outer points to be. And when I determine that, I can hit I in my keyboard to make an in point and then hit O on my keyboard to make an out point, which then, if I drag this down to my timeline, will only drag down the in and out points. And now I'm gonna hit play. Okay, so I guess I found something that should work for me. Let me go back in the timeline and set my in point and my out point and then drag it to the timeline to move from there. This portion of the music should be for this intro and let's drag this down to the timeline so we can see how long this actually is. So that's around six and a half seconds, almost seven seconds. So now I wanna extend my audio track number one so I can see all this audio bumps a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the song just a few times and whenever there is a beat, I'm hitting M on my keyboard to create a marker. It's maybe something like right there. And you see, this just created this marker one. And I'm going to do that for every single beat that I hear. Doesn't mean I have to use every one of those beats to make a cut, but it's nice to see where those beats are. Let's just go ahead. Let me just fast forward this to create my markers very quickly. So let me zoom out and you see all those markers and I haven't created marker mark points in here because I want to have a, a little longer still or video clip playing from here to here where I can do some nice text animations, which we come to later on in this video. So the next step is that we actually have to end our music the right way. And I don't wanna end my audio like with a fade out, something boring like this. You can do if you want so, but for me, let me just bring this up. So what I want you to do now, if you wanna create this little reverby fade out, go to the last beat of your music. And then what I want you to do is create a cut exactly one frame before the beat is hitting. So we're gonna make a cut and then we move one frame forward and we've seen right now the beat is hitting. What I wanna do then is drag this up, hold Alt on your keyboard, left click and drag this down to the audio track number two. So we created a duplicate of this exact ending. And what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna right click, create a new compound clip and call this reverb and then go to my toolbox in the effects library, scroll all the way down until you see Fairlight effects, and then you either scroll down until you see um, the reverb and drag this on, or you just search for the reverb. Let's click and drag and drop this reverb effect onto our compound clip, and right now this is the reverb interface. So first of all, I'm gonna lower my room size from 250 square meters down to about 65 to 70 square meters, something like right there. The next step is I'm gonna extend my reverb time from 950 milliseconds up to around 2000 milliseconds. The last step is I'm gonna lower my dry and wet output, let's say to around 50%, something like that, and then I'm gonna close this. Now the next step is right click on the compound clip and open this in the timeline. Then what I wanna do so I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, left click and create a duplicate of it. Then I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard to de deactivate audio track number two and then extend this outwards just a few seconds. Then if we have done this, let's go back to a regular timeline. Now the next step is that we click on this reverb effect so that it's selected. Go to the inspector in the top right corner, scroll down until you see equalizer and let's extend this just a little bit. And then we wanna activate band number four and then turn this band number four icon to this one. That's pretty important. And once we've done that, we can lower band number four ever so slightly 
to just cut out all the high frequencies. And once we've done that, we can extend this just a little bit, something like that. And now if we go back to the start and have a listen, this should sound pretty good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this just a little bit and then click on this three verb compound clip, go to the inspector, select effects, and then you see this three verb effect and then just click those three lines that will open up the user interface once again. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna increase my room size just a little bit to maybe 75 square meters. Then I'm gonna up the reverb time just a little bit to 2200 milliseconds and then the dry and wet output, I'm gonna up this to around 65. So these are just the fine tunings. And of course, if you're not using the same exact track, you're gonna have to figure out the settings that make your endings sound best. So let's try that one more time. Let's go here and then let's hit play. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna stick to that. And now what I wanna do is bring in all my footage. This is just for educational purposes, okay? This is all stock footage that I got from Paxels. You should use your own footage that's related to your YouTube channel or to your brand. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna select this one and then make an in point right here and an out point right here. And I'm gonna drag this down just so it's on my timeline. And this is actually the first that we are using. And now you see why it's important that we create those markers because I can just bring this down and we'll snap onto this marker. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the next clip right there. Let's go here in and here out and then just drag this down. Boom, extend this. And then maybe use this one where she's pouring the chocolate right there in. Let's go forward, out, and then drag this down. Perfect, something like that. And then let me fast forward this. I'm just placing my footage on my timeline. See, I just finished um, dropping my footage onto the timeline, making some cuts, and now we're ready to go from there. First of all, I'm gonna do some adjustments because some of them were stills that just don't fit the frame. So what I'm gonna do is let's find them right there and then gonna zoom in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control C so that this is selected, and then I'm gonna go to the next still and hit Alt and V. And then I wanna just paste the zoom attribute and then hit apply, then Alt V, hit apply, Alt and V, apply, Alt and V and apply. If you didn't know that, if you hit Control C on any clip and then hit Alt and V, you can paste the attributes of a specific clip. So basically whatever you see in the inspector on the right side under transform, like zoom position, rotation angle, anchor point, or even color correction, fusion effects, plugins. If you do this with audio effects, you can of course implement audio attributes like volume, plugins, equalizer, whatever. But for now, we have made our rough cut and this is looking pretty good. So what I find is um, I found this clip on Pexels right there, which could basically act as a cool overlay for the first few clips. So then I'm going to hit I for in point and O for out point and then drag this over so that it just matches our first few cuts, something like that. And let's go to this and then go to the inspector. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lower the opacity to around 50%. And then I'm gonna hit play to see what this looks like. Right, this looks pretty dope. So once we made a rough cut and everything's looking nice and clean, we wanna go ahead and create some text effects. And I'm not gonna show you like 
80 different text effects. I'm just going to show you a few simple ones and you can create your own style using them. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my effects library. I'm going to go to my titles and X this out and just drag in this text plus note. So what I'm going to do now is let's first of all check how much frames this first portion has where I want to implement some text. So this starts at frame 20 and ends at 2 seconds and 0 frames. So this is 4 and 24. So this is 28 frames. Um, what I'm going to do is go to this text plus and make this like the exact same length. So what you could do now is right click with your arrow key like 27 times to create 28 frames or what you could do is hold shift and drag the right arrow key to jump a second forward in your timeline. So this is basically 24 frames and now we're gonna hit one, two, three, four and then we wanna make a cut, delete the rest. We want to have this saying tutorials, right? Then I wanna go to my shading or actually let's change the font to Montserrat. Let's increase this just a little bit, maybe something like that. I want this text to appear here so let's put this towards the right side of the screen. Then go to layout and then drag the center point over to the right side. And of course, just a little bit up. So it's at the top. Then I want to go back to the text and then I want to go to shading. And then I want to go to shading element one and select this one right here so that we only have an outline. And I think that's pretty cool. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Fusion page, make this a single viewer. And what I'm gonna have right now is a template. And then we wanna hit Shift Spacebar and type in duplicate. Now, as of right now, we have two copies, but if we extend this, we have multiple copies, right? So what I'm gonna do is on frame zero with the duplicate node selected, I'm gonna hit um, my keyframe button on copies and on maybe something like 24 frames I'm gonna have this go here all the way up maybe something like that but we want to go back to our template and bring our text up even more something like that should work fine then I'm gonna go to my duplicate node and on frame 24, you want to make this just a little bit more, something like this. And now we have a pretty cool animation. But of course, we want to make this smooth. So let's go to our spline window, select duplicate and copies, zoom to fit, highlight them both, and then hit F on our keyboard, which then will result in a very nice coming in. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to drag this over and just put it above my footage to see what this looks like. Something like that. So that's, that's very, very easy. That's very basic. There's another thing that we could add if we want to, um, and that's like bring this in from the side. So let's go back to our Fusion page. And on this duplicate node, let's go to frame number zero, or actually let's go to frame 24 without keyframing it. And then let's, let's go with something around 70. Then go to frame zero keyframe this and then we go to frame 24 and then set this back to zero. So and now what I want to do is I'm going to highlight those two keyframes or highlight this one hit F and then highlight this one and hit F. Now if we watch this back don't know if that looks cool but I'm just doing this like on the go. Whatever comes to my mind I'm going to try it out see if it's working if not, reset it, do something different. Oh, that's, look, that's looking pretty good. We could make this like come in a little bit faster. So let's do that. Go to the Fusion page and then what I want to do is let's 
just increase this something like that with our spline window and now if we want to watch this back right click render cages on So now let's go ahead and create a second text animation and we're gonna do that by using this text plus node. Just drag this onto our timeline and then get rid from there. Maybe not that long, something like this. So that covers this one and those three clips right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my text and then type in editing, something like that, change my font and now I'm gonna increase the size just a little bit. Now from there I could do a few changes here and there on the edit page, but I wanna have the flexibility from the fusion page, so I'm gonna go there. So let's click on this little fusion icon, and this will load up the whole motion graphic inside the fusion page. First of all, I'm gonna click into a single viewer, because we don't need two viewers for this one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my template and then go to layout and bring this to the right side and then bring this up so that it's nice on the top right there. Perfect. Now you may be asking why I put this here and that's because if I go there um, to my edit page, I'm going to see because he is on the left side, so I'm going to have my text on the right side. Now let's go back to the fusion page and I wanna do some changes in here. First of all, I want to access my modifier and I'm gonna do that by right clicking in my text editor and select the follower. And this makes us accessible to the modifiers tab. And as you see, we already have a keyframe added to this text. So now let's go to shading first, go to element number two, which by default is a red outline. If we enable this, you can see that we have a red outline. Um, so that should be cleared. Let's go to black. And this is looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the thickness just a little bit to 0 0.03. Now with this being done, I'm going to go to my modifiers. And then first of all, I'm going to set a delay time. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna select two frames and why that is important, I'm gonna show you right now. So first of all, I'm gonna go to shading in my modifiers tab, not to the shading elements in my normal tab. And in the modifiers tab, because I've activated my shading element one and two in the main text node, I'm gonna go to modifiers and I can modify them from this one without adding uh, separate keyframes. So first of all, I'm gonna go to my first frame of the timeline and I want to set a keyframe on opacity with my shading element number two selected. So let's go ahead, select the shading element number two, enable this because we haven't enabled it yet in the modifier. And then what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to set the color to black um, to match the previous one. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a keyframe on opacity on frame number zero and drag this down. And I forget to change the color of my text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to tools and go to text and change the color of my text to black as well. <clears throat> so now it's easier for you to see. So now let's go back to modifiers and then in there I set my keyframe on opacity on frame number zero to zero. And then I wanna go ahead, go to frame number one and increase this. Just take a look at the first letter. If I go to frame number zero, this E shrinks because right now this whole text has an outline which is also black. But if I'm gonna go forward one frame, now on frame number one, because I've keyframed the opacity on frame number one to be one, my E gets the outline. If I go if I go forward one frame to frame number two, nothing happens. Now if I go forward another frame, my D gets the outline. And that's because of the delay of two sec uh, of two frames. So when I'm gonna forward to frame number four, nothing changes. Go to five, the eye gets the outline. Frame number six, nothing changes. Frame number seven, 
the T gets the outline. And that's how you can make animations way easier and way less time consuming than just, you know, keyframing every single thing manually. But now what I'm gonna do, let's just go to shading element number one, which basically is our filling. And now I wanna go to frame number two, set a keyframe on opacity and drag this down. And as you can see, it's completely gone. Then I wanna go forward one frame to frame number three and increase the opacity. And now you see that the E gets filled. And if I go back to this, to frame number zero and hit play, you see that this is a nice smooth right on animation. Then nothing's changing. Then comes a filling and another outline. Nothing changes, filling, another outline. Nothing changes, filling, another outline. So that's basically what the follower modifier does. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to frame number 12, set a keyframe on opacity on the shading element one, go to frame number 13 and drag this down. Then I'm gonna move forward a couple frames to frame number 22, set a keyframe on opacity, go forward one frame, increase the opacity once again. And then, of course, I'm gonna go forward a few frames to frame number 32, set a keyframe, move forward one frame, and then lower the opacity. And then from there, I can go forward one frame, go to my shading element number two, because I want the outlines to write off as well. So I'm gonna select the opacity keyframe, go forward one frame, and then write this off. Watch this back to see what we've created with just basically a few keyframes being added. Oh, actually what I don't like is all those four keyframes, we have to move them a little bit to the left. So I'm gonna go to my keyframes and then go to timeline. And then this is the uh, follow one opacity from our shading elements number one. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna left click and box those keyframes up. So I'm gonna select the first two. Let's zoom to fit and then grab them and then just bring them in a couple frames, something like that. And then I'm gonna move the same thing, something like right there. And now this looks something like this. It writes on and then writes off. Keep in mind that we've all done this, let's get rid of the keyframes, in just one text node. So you don't have to build out a crazy node tree with like five different text nodes and then text instance copies um, and masks and whatnot. So this is just one simple basic text plus node. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this template or text plus node and then hit shift spacebar and I'm gonna search for a duplicate one more time. And then I'm gonna add the duplicate node in between my template and my media out. And with this duplicate node selected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the copies up to around, let's go with, let's go with eight. We probably don't need eight, but let's just set eight. So we're um, good to go. What I'm gonna do now is in the time offset, I'm gonna set two frames. And then in the center part, I wanna go to my Y part and then I'm gonna drag this down to something that's nice and clean, something like right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play at the beginning and you know, this is what we've created. Pretty cool, pretty modern text animation with just two nodes. So this is pretty mind blowing. And what I can do now is I can go back to my text node to the template can go under modifiers and then go to timing. And now it's pretty cool. We can change the delay type between each character or between first and last character. So then it writes on one word and then writes off the word. Or if we set this to none, it just goes up and down. And you see you can get like a bunch of different text animations with just this one text node and then adding in a duplicate node. So let's go with um, let's go with this one. Or what else could we do is if we don't want to change the delay type, go between each character, 
and then we can change the order. Right now it's set to automatic, but we can set this to inside out. And basically what this does is it starts from the middle letter and then fills outwards. And I've made a completely new animation without having to change anything. So you see this is like an arrow pointing up or if you wanna have an arrow pointing down, you just go outside in. And right now you have an arrow pointing down. See, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Or you can use completely random. This gives also a cool effect. It's maybe not that clean, but you know, you can play around with those settings. Um, or you can choose random, but one by one. Or, you know, you can choose all characters or correct range. And then set the first character to um, a setting and then the last character to maybe 15. And right now this gives another completely different animation. See, this is uh, all characters and let's go with um, set the delay type to none. And then right now we just leave it at this. So this is basically a clean and very, very easy way to create some cool text animations without having to spend like a couple hours to make cool animations. So that's just maybe a way to go around this. So right now we have two different text effects, this one right here, and then this one. And then that should be enough for text effects right now. But for now, let's keep going on. I know this segment was kind of long compared to the other ones. But for now, let's just keep going and creating some mats. Let's now talk about mats and not only talk about, but we're also creating some. We render some and we import some. And of course, we apply some. First of all, what is a luma mat? Think of it as a grayscale going from complete white to complete black, whilst everything that is complete white will be opaque and everything that is black will be transparent. And everything in between, depending on their luminance values, will be different levels of opaque or transparent. So this might be a little confusing to you at first, but I promise when we get to that in the Fusion page, it's very easy to understand. So how do we create a mat? First of all, we're gonna determine the length of our mats and the mats that we wanna use. And for this one in specifically, I'm gonna use a few mats. So first of all, I'm gonna go to my effects library and in the effects library, I wanna select effects and then drag in a new fusion comp. So with this fusion comp, the first mat that I wanna apply should be this length of those five clips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag down the fusion composition right there something like that is perfect and now i want to copy this over duplicate it hitting alt and left click on my keyboard to create a mat that is the length of the second clip then i want to create another mat for those clips right here one two three four five so let's alt left click drag this down something like right there perfect and then maybe for those two yeah, for those two, I'm going to create a mat as well. So let's duplicate this one more time. Bring this in. Perfect. And now what I want to do is I'm going to create, or how many mats are this? One, two, three, four. Okay, let's create a fifth one. And that should be enough for now. So then alt and duplicate this one more time. Like that. And this is the first step that we want to do when we wanna create a mat. So now the next step is, let's just go to this Fusion Composition and hop into the Fusion page. So right now, all we see is our media out. And then to start things out, we need a background. So let's drag in this background node and connect the output of background one to the input of media out. Well, this will give us a black background, right? So what we're gonna do with this black background is actually we're gonna merge a white background on top of it. So let's grab another background, bring this in, and then grab the output of background number two and drag it onto the output of background one to create merge one. And you see background number two is already merged into the foreground, which is perfect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to background number two and change the color to 
complete white, something like that. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna draw a couple masks using my rectangle tools. If you want, you can use the ellipse or the polygon tool as you wish. So for this one, I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool. And by the way, if I forgot to mention this, go to background number one and drag the alpha channel down completely so it becomes transparent. So what I'm gonna do now is, as you see, this fusion comp is 19 frames. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the output of rectangle one into the blue input of background one to create a mask. And as you see right now, this um, is the mask and it's cut out some part of our white background. So what I'm gonna do with this mask is, let's just extend this, bring this over something like right there. Perfect. And now this is our ending position, right? Because we wanna animate our mats, something like right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle one, and I'm gonna do this with my control C and then control V to paste it on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna hold shift and left click and then just connect this in between something like right there. But then I'm gonna go to my rectangle two, which is basically the duplicate of rectangle one, and then go to the center part, and let's drag this down to 0 0.25, and now set the rectangle one to 0 0.75, 0 0.75, so that these will align nicely and give a complete white background. But what I'm gonna do with it now is rectangle one is the upper rectangle. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my frame zero. I'm gonna mark the center X and Y, and then I'm gonna drag this over to the left until it's completely out of frame. Then I'm gonna go forward to maybe frame 10. And then I'm gonna bring this over until it covers our whole screen. Something like right there should be fine. Let's just go to the middle to make things a little more even, 0 0.5. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my rectangle number two, go to frame zero, keyframe the center, and then drag this all the way to the right until it's out of frame. And then I'm gonna go to number 10 and then I'm gonna set a keyframe on 0 0.5 which will then bring this in and now we have something that looks like this. Okay so this is a linear movement and we're gonna smooth things out by going into our spline curve then we're gonna choose rectangle one and displacement highlight them both keyframes and then hit S on our keyboard to smooth things out then we're gonna close the spline window, we're gonna go to rectangle one, open up the spline window, same thing, zoom to fit, highlight them both, hit S on our keyboard to smooth them out, and now this is what it looks like. And if we want to adjust some things, just drag this in a little bit more until frame zero. But we also gotta do this for our other rectangle, otherwise our movement won't match as you can see right now. I'm gonna go to rectangle number two, open up the spline window, zoom to fit, highlight them both. Now just drag this over until frame zero and now everything should align nicely. So, pretty perfect. This is our first mat that we're gonna use. Now let's go back to our edit page uh, because right now it's just white and we don't see anything. We're gonna change that in a bit, but first let's create all the mats. So then we have to only render them out once and then import them. And then after that, we're gonna implement them into our footage. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my Fusion Comp number two, open this up in the Fusion page, do the exact same steps. First of all, I'm gonna bring in a background something like that, and then bring in another background, merge this on top, go to background number one, lower the alpha channel, and then set this background to white. So this is the exact same steps for every single time when we wanna create a mat. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a rectangle tool and connect this to background number two to create our first rectangle. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna extend this horizontally 
something like that and then set this to 0 0.25 this is fine and then I'm gonna leave the and then I'm gonna leave this there because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to something right like right here I'm gonna set a keyframe on this rectangle one and bring this up perfect now I want to go to frame number 12 and then I'm gonna bring this down so that it covers our whole frame then I'm gonna go to my spline window I'm gonna go to displacement this one right here zoom to fit highlight them both keyframes and then smooth things out and let's bring this over to something like right there it should be fine let's have a look so this looks pretty good and this is uh, pretty basic stuff that I'm doing right now okay and why did I only do a mat on the left side because we have our text on the right side so this will look pretty good at the end so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go to the next fusion comp open up the fusion page same thing applies here drag in two backgrounds merge background 2 on top of background 1 and then connect the output of merge 1 to the input of media out. Then background number 1, I'm gonna drag down the alpha channel completely, go to background number 2 and change the color to white. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna bring in a rectangle 1, then I'm gonna extend the size so that it matches our whole frame, then I'm, I wanna lower the width quite a bit something like that bring this up out of frame and then I want to bring in another rectangle make this a little bit smaller something like that and then bring this over to this side and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set a keyframe on rectangle 2 which basically is this rectangle set a keyframe on center and then move towards the last frame of this composition and drag this down all the way to the right then I'm gonna go to rectangle 1 go to frame 0 set a keyframe on center go to the last frame and then I'm gonna drag this all the way down and what we have now is something that looks like this so just a nice cross going across a frame and of course we're gonna smooth things out so highlight both rectangle nodes go to the spline window select rectangle one displacement zoom to fit high oops mess this up I'm gonna highlight them both and then hit S on my keyboard to smooth things out then I'm gonna deselect rectangle one then I'm gonna select rectangle two and do the same thing zoom to fit highlight them both hit S on my keyboard to smooth things out and then let's just watch this back okay so this looks pretty good you see creating um, simple mats isn't that hard of course you can go crazy and create something more complicated like I'm gonna show you right now connect this one bring another another background something right there then opacity down background one and make this white and of course you can go something more advanced like this and I'm gonna create a nice rectangle right there and then bring this down and then create another one and then create a rectangle right there but this is very time-consuming and you have to get them like perfect very very accurate so what else could we do add another one and then maybe right there go here go there and then there or what you could do is you can delete them and just go with polygon one and like control C and then control V click off control V click off control V click off control V control V and then just gonna apply them bring this over something like right there and then shift and connect this one in between and then bring this over just a little bit more something like that and then bring this one in and then bring this over something right there and then we might rotate this to 160 degrees 
and then we want to bring this over and down. And of course, because my triangles aren't um, perfect, I don't have the same distance between those lines. So this is something that you have to nail, otherwise it will look just bad and amateur. You get the point, like you can go crazy and create all the shapes that you want, but for me, I'm just going to stick with some simple stuff, like some rectangle tools. Maybe something like this. Then zoom out. And what we're going to do now is create the width is 0 0.5. So if I make the width 1, it will cover our whole frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width to 0 0.336. And then I'm going to bring this over right there. Then I'm going to hit Control C, Control V two times, and then I'm going to hit Shift and connect this in between. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my center point right there. Of course, you have to be careful um, with this line this shouldn't be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over to the left side just a little bit. And then I'm going to connect my next rectangle in with my shift key, just hold and drag and drop, and then bring this over something like that. And now I don't have any lines whatsoever. And I'm going to go to my rectangle number one, <clears throat> set a keyframe on my first frame. And then I'm going to go all the way down, something like that. And then I'm going to go to frame number, uh, let's go to frame number four. And then I'm going to bring this, bring this up all the way so that our frame is covered, something like that. And now I set my first keyframe at frame, at the first frame, which is frame minus four. So then I'm going to go to my next one and I'm going to set this at minus two, set my first keyframe right there. And I'm going to bring this all the way up. Something like that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go to frame number six and I'm going to bring this down. Something like that will be fine. And then I'm going to go to my last rectangle and I'm going to go to frame zero, set a keyframe on center, or actually let's get rid of that. Go to frame number minus four, set a keyframe on center and bring this all the way down. Then I'm going to go to frame number four. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this up so that we have a nice animation. Don't know if this will look good, but we'll see. I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna reset this, this one, and this one, and then I'm gonna go to minus four as well, set a keyframe, and bring this up until it's out of frame. Then I'm going to go to frame number four and just going to bring this down. So let's now highlight those three rectangles, go to our spline window, and then I'm going to start with the first one, highlight this, go zoom to fit, highlight both keyframes, hit S on my keyboard, and then I'm going to deselect rectangle one, go to rectangle the first copy, highlight both keyframes, hit S, Deselect this, go to the next one, zoom to fit, highlight them both, hit S on my keyboard, and now I'm good to go. So, and this is what it looks like. Okay, or let's actually watch it here. So this is what it looks like. Very, very basic, of course. So let's go ahead and create our last map. So let's go to the Fusion page, bring in our first background, connect this to the media out and then bring in a second background, background number two, connect this to the output of background one. And let's change this one to a white color and background one gonna make transparent. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a rectangle mask 
zoom out just a little bit, make this smaller and whoops, something like that. And then maybe just copy this and paste this two times, something like that. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna set a keyframe on the first frame on all of them on center. Something like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to frame number 10 and I'm gonna go to my first rectangle and I'm gonna drag this in something like that. Then I'm gonna go, oh, let's go with five frames. I'm gonna go to frame number 15 gonna go to my second rectangle and I'm gonna drag this in like so and then I'm gonna move five frames forward once again go to my third rectangle and I'm gonna drag this in like so sure I'm gonna bring this back just a little bit oh, even a slightly bit more Something like that should be good. Or what we can do is paste this one more time so we have a fourth copy. Then I'm gonna go to my first frame, set a keyframe on center, and I'm gonna go to frame 25, and then I'm gonna drag this in just like so. Now this is looking pretty good, and if I go back, I still can see my text, so we can actually add one more. So let's do that go to this last rectangle, hit Control V to paste a copy. Then I'm gonna set a keyframe on the first frame on the center. And then I'm gonna go to frame number 30 and bring this in just like so. Perfect, now we obviously have to smoothen them out. So let's highlight them all. Go to our spline window, select the first one, zoom to fit, highlight both keyframes, S on our keyboard, deselect, then the next one, zoom to fit, highlight them both, S on our keyboard, then this one, deselect, then the next one, zoom to fit, highlight them both, S on our keyboard, and of course, deselect, then select the next one, zoom to fit, highlight them both, S on our keyboard, deselect, and now let's select the last one, zoom to fit, highlight them both, S on our keyboard, and now this is what we have. So now I'm gonna go back to my edit page. How do we export a mat? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna highlight my fusion comps and bring them over. Then of course those two. And then bring them over just like so. So let's bring those two down and bring this one down. And these are all our mats. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard to create an endpoint, and I'm gonna hit O at the end to make an out point. And right now I'm gonna go to my render page. So first of all in my render page is what I'm gonna do is I set my in and out range, but I'm gonna adjust that in a second. First of all, obviously rename the file, and this is mat one and location will be my desktop and then I'm going to choose individual clips, export video, format, QuickTime, codec, it's not Apple ProRes, we're actually going to use DNX HR and then in the resolution we want to check export alpha and now drop down this in and out range to just match our first mat and we're going to add this to the render queue and then hit render one then what we wanna do is call this mat number two and adjust our in and out range accordingly to our mat two. Same settings, add to render queue, render one. Now what I'm gonna do, rename this to mat three, adjust my in and out range. Accordingly, settings are perfect. Then I'm gonna hit add to render queue, render one. Then, of course, call this mat4. Adjust your in and out range accordingly. Add to render queue, render one. 
And now the last one, mat5. Settings are fine. Adjust our in and out range accordingly. And then hit add to render queue, render one. Perfect, we're done. So now that we have rendered our mats, we wanna import them the right way because we could go to our media pool and then go into intro and then go to mats and then import media. What I'm gonna do now and then go to my desktop where all those mats are stored and then hit open. They will be imported, but they won't have the mat function. So we can just delete that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my media pool Gonna go to Macintosh and then gonna go to users, mine, and then I'm gonna go to my desktop. And then these are the mats that I just created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight them all, one, two, three, four, and five, and then gonna right click and add into media pool as a mat, right? So I'm gonna go do that. And those are now stored in my media pool in my mats folder as a mat. And to confirm that it worked, that you imported this as a mat, is that you see down in the bottom left corner, you see this music note and to the right, you see a white box with a black circle in it. And that means it is imported as a mat. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my edit page. I'm gonna go to this right here and I'm gonna set my out point. Right now we have to apply a mat. And we can do that by going inside here scroll in just a little bit and then highlight those clips because our first match should be containing all of those clips and then right click create a new compound clip and then call this first right and now let's deactivate this one so let's go to our first clip and then go into the color page now inside the color page this is my first five clips where I want to implement the first mat, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click and add an alpha output. Then I'm gonna connect this blue alpha output to this alpha output. Then I'm gonna right click on my first node and I'm gonna select add mat. Then I'm gonna go to timeline mats and there I have all my mats that I've imported as a mat. If I skip the step to import them the correct way and want to implement this as a mat right now, the timeline mats folder would be empty. So let's select the first mat, boom, right there. And as you see, now we have our mat going in. And this is basically just a mat that slides in on the, the upper part slides in from the left side and the lower part slides in from the right side. And now if we activate this one, this will look something like this. Let's just deactivate the music for now. Of course, we can't see anything because if we deactivate this one, right now it's pitch black, right? And that is because we have to um, put some footage below uh, our compound clip right now. Because as I told previously, whatever is black on a mat will be transparent and whatever is white on a mat will be opaque. So. As you can remember, this part and this part was white and they both slide in like that. But first, let's just put some footage below this. So let's bring those two up by one layer and then let's go to our footage. Let's just use the f this one right here. I'm gonna set my in point and I'm gonna set my out point. Just like how much frames are this? Zero to 20. So I'm gonna set my in and out point in point and then I'm gonna set my out point after 20 frames I'm gonna drag this in and it should perfectly fit and now this is what we see at first and then our images start to slide in and right now we can lower the opacity of this one just a little bit more to around 23 percent so these are the first seconds of our clip but now we can import our next mat and this is right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this up or actually let's just right click and create this as a new compound clip and call this just to create. And then of course we need some footage below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this one and then just select the part 
right here and then bring this in something like that extend this something perfect now I want to deactivate this one right here and I'm gonna click on this one and then I'm gonna go to my color page I want to add an alpha output first I want to connect these blue dots then I want to right click go to add mat video timeline mats and then mat 2 and this is the mat that I'm going to add now we can right now we can see him and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit and activate this one bring this on top and then bring this down you can see that we start things out very nicely and then if I go forward the mat comes in so we see this dude and the text comes in on the right side so this to me looks pretty cool and what I'm gonna do now is how many clips did I select did I select all of them no I just I guess I selected those five right click and then new compound clip and then this is three now this one what we want to do is we need some footage so let's just use this fog again so in point and then out point and then bring this down to our timeline something like that and now I'm gonna go to my color page and I'm gonna add the mat to this smoke so I'm gonna right click go to add alpha output connect those blue dots and then I'm gonna right click, oops, disable this node, right click, add mat, go to timeline video mats, and then mat 3. And right now you see that I've this footage is below my mat, and then this is the smoke footage, and then this is the cross mat that we made that will animate from the uh, top left corner to the bottom right corner. So let's go back to our edit page, and you see right now, whoop, this comes across or frame just like that All right so this is looking pretty good so let's implement our next mat and we're gonna make a compound clip out of this one and call this um, this one was was this four this should be four right so create number four and we maybe let's take this one and set this on top so let's create an in point and an out point and then let's bring this down extend the size so that it fits and then let's go to our color page create an output create alpha output and then connect the blue outputs together right click and then go to add mat and then go to timeline mats and then select the fourth one and right now what if we want to use a uh, a second mat because we can't connect another mat in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and add node and add a key mixer. So this one will go in there and then I'm gonna go add mat, timeline mats and select this one, deselect this one, bring this over there and connect this in. And right now we have two mats connected together. So you have to work with a key mixer and then of course we can right click on this and go to add input and then we can create a third one and then we can um, create a fourth one whatsoever, right? So let's get rid of this one, boom. So right now this is what we have. And this is just very simple and basic going in and then changing You see this and that one's gonna be our last mat so let's just highlight those and right click create a new compound clip so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to footage and then gonna import this one right here delete the audio whoops delete the audio and then extend this gonna go to the color page right click add alpha output and then I'm gonna connect this 
and then I'm gonna right click add mat and mat five. So this is our mat. So this is uh, what mats are, how you would create them, how you would export them and how you would import them and of course implement them into your um, footage. After you've edited, of course, then at this last part, you wanna implement a logo or whatsoever, or just start with your talking head right here, and then let the music fade out whilst you're starting your video with a talking head or with some P-roll or whatever it is. So I hope this was as in-depth as you asked me to do. If there are still any questions about mats, about text effects, about different editing techniques whatsoever, leave them in the comments down below and I will reply to every single one of you that's commenting. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoyed this type of intro style. And keep in mind that you should use footage that is brand related to your channel and your own instead of using stock footage. All right, that's a wrap guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's been a pretty long one, like an hour plus. So if you made it to the end, let me know in the comments down below, would highly appreciate that. But otherwise, hope you all have a great day. See you in the next one, bye.